This is Anderson Penn's podcast, episode 287 for Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. This is Brian. This is Lisa. Thanks for joining us. Just give it to me. So this last weekend I was in Chicago and I met up with a friend of mine who started this canoe rental business. David did? Yeah. I had the same idea, but I missed the boat. First, they insult my hair right before we start. Now you're telling me a joke. No, David was not in the canoe rental business. I know. <laughs> so, so you just lied. All right. I don't lie. No, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm just going to sit here. And you're just going to sit there and yep. drink coffee? Yes. Oh, you know. It's good coffee. Okay. Uh, we got some new stuff. Uh, actually, I don't even have them here. Uh, Hobonichi. Teco. Not even in, and they're out. So, I still want to know what you're going to do with your old one. You so know, you, you did know, not. You did not take one. You did not reserve one for yourself this no, year. No, I did not. Okay, is that because you just don't do planners? I didn't do that. I did that one for a little bit. But what I was thinking is, you, you know, I was talking with Chris downstairs, and he said there are people who actually buy used Hobonichis. That just floored me. What do you do with them? Well, they want to see the format right, right. and they want to you know, see the paper. True. And, and so it wouldn't it's, be it's, full price. It's, it's a cheap way to do it. Um, so maybe I might do that. I might, I might cut out the pages and then, okay. and then sell it. But I use it for a couple months. Which is longer than you use the other planner that we picked out. Yeah. Yeah. So bottom line is you don't do planners. I was thinking about getting, getting a Teco, though. Not the Weeks, but the other one. Okay. Well, you better hurry up. Well, okay. So Are we out? We are basically out. Uh, sign up for back and stock notifications. We're going to get some more in. Yes. So, um, they Grab be, it before Brian gets one. Come, come any, he's not any, use it. any minute soon. Um, so. All right. See, I have a very specific format, and if I can't find that, I just. Well, see, I don't, don't. know what my format is. I, it weeks was a good idea because I liked the the size, but I, I just I couldn't do it. Okay. So. I think it's because you just don't. You saying I don't plan? I'm saying that. You <laughs> Are don't you write saying it I don't down. plan? And <laughs> you don't write it down. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yep. Um, anyway, anyway. Uh, sign up for back stock notifications. We'll let you know as soon as we uh, we get our next uh, confirmation of our order yes. in. So yes. Um, next. Next. I love these. You know, I, I don't have one. I don't either. And and there's there've been a couple Ooh, of. We don't share. We don't share. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a couple of Franklin Christophs that we have not. We have not kept. I know. Why is that? I don't know. I never kept a 19. I've got an 02. I've I, got an 03. I never kept the pocket 40. Bet if we begged, Scott would make one. Like he would make one. one. Yeah. Um, the Franklin Christoph Model 45 in the Anderson Pens exclusive blue. I love this. This is, this is, this a great, is like great material. perfect for my hand. Why don't I have one of these? I don't know. I don't know. It's pocket. It's clipless. Maybe um, that's it. I like a clip. Threads at the end of... The it's, section, it's so it's really comfortable. Great design. Number great five design. nib. Um, Perfect posted. Fits in my hand unposted, but what? I mean, that's a killer color, people. So they're back uh, in stock. Mm. Extra fine, fine, medium, broad. Uh, there is, uh, I oh. believe there's a 1.1 and a 1.4 italic now. Which is very cool. So they don't do a 1.5 in the number five size. They do a 1.4. These, uh, we've had these in for a week or two. They've actually sold really, really well. Uh, I'm not sure what we have left, um, but grab them. We do them once or twice a year. Yep, so. Um, so grab I, it while you can. I did send some down to Chicago, so if you are in the vicinity of the Chicago store, there's uh, a bunch there to take a look at. So nice, a couple of all right. Uh, and the next one is my, ooh, this is. This is huge. This is huge, this is a big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> You can't have one. That's how big a deal it is. Pilot Custom Arushi in Vermilion. That's a pretty this is color. A, this is a sexy pen. I'm telling you, this thing, Vermilion Arushi Lacquer, black end caps, section number 30, two-tone nib. Number 30, that number 30. Number 30. It is beautiful the way that the gold is masked yeah. all the way around. The platinum is masked in the inside. Well, that is pretty. Um, also doubles as a personal defense weapon. Cartridge converter, but it's 
Did I mention it's a Rushi? Oh, it's, just, it's gorgeous. It's that really... color is just beautiful. Let me see this thing. It's I thought huge. the black was nice, but this one is just even nicer. But it's it's not a it's not for the faint of heart. It's a big pen. It's it's noticeable. Um, lovely clip. Let's just see how that goes there. Look at that. It's like it's meant to be. Meant to be not there. Um, and there is actually a matching ballpoint ball point. now, which actually is quite reasonable, I think. Um, this is gorgeous. It's a nice looking pen. So, long time coming on that. Uh, super Super stoked. excited to have yep. a couple. Yep. Uh, there were actually less than 30 came in the country. Ooh. So, less than 30 of them. Awesome. All right, what else? Uh, paper, again. We're going to start with paper and with paper. Oh, okay. Tomoe River A5 loose sheets. Ah. Um, <laughs> careful, careful. Very loose. <laughs> um, I've got the cream. Brian's got, got the white. Look at that. These are great. Um, I love Tomoe. You know, the, 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 the A4 was always a little bit big for me, but the A5 is more kind of my size. So I like the A4. You like the bigger? I size? do. Okay. Sort of like oh. with planners. I like a full size. If you if you're into writing letters, this is before, perfect. Now you've got you've got the A5. I mean, now some people do use A4 for letters, but um, if you're not writing a really super long letter, I don't have that much to say. Well, then you should use A5. I should. Perfect. Um, awesome. Blank, of course. Cream Typical, and white. just gorgeous. F I love how it feels. This is the 52 gram paper, not the 68. 100 sheets. Um, so there you, there you go. go. That's right. new. That was exciting. I was I was excited to see that. That's that's a good good addition to the lineup. So. All right, you were gone last week. We are, but we've got. You were gone last week. Yes, but we've got. Oh. Ask us anything is next on the agenda. All right, I'm not reading my script here. All right, so I'm going to read it. And you're you're going to read. Answer. I have no right. idea. I have, have no idea. No idea what these I are. They not spring these on me. I like to know the answer. It's like There's being a parent. You never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. There might to. not be an answer. All right, ready? I'm ready. What is your favorite paper? Smoother or toothier, dot, grid, blank, lined, cream, white. Oh, my God. Number um, one, too many options. Too many options. Um, mine has to be lined. Non-negotiable. Because if it's blank or even the dot, like I need to stay in the line. So I need lined. And I like white. Okay. How about you? Uh, you know, I am the most paper agnostic person you're going to meet. I don't really care. Is that a term? It, it, I think it just became one. Okay. I, I, I like white, but I also have, I've been using this week, and the last White Lines notebook oh, I do like that we've that. ever had. Um, I don't really care. Blank is fine because sometimes I like to write bigger. I have broader nibs. Lined is okay. I, I don't really care. In fact, I have a stack of uh, paper on my desk that was kind of like rejects from uh, old uh, notepads and things that we were just going to throw out. I'm just using scrap paper, so I don't really care. Okay, I good don't answer. I don't, don't have a favorite. I don't care. Surprise you. Yeah, surprise me. All right. Question number two. Oh my god. What is one fountain pen you cannot live without and why? This is, you know, that desert island thing. One I can't live without. So it's not saying we can't have more than one, but there's one that I have to have. So this is the the house is on fire. What do you grab besides your cat? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a visual. <laughs> um. <laughs> Pretty sure she'd find her way out. One pan I can't live without. Yeah. Think carefully, Mr. Anderson. I'm going to go with my Aurora Optima 75th anniversary yeah, yeah, that's that a, you that's, bought for that's me. A, that's a solid choice. Um, that's a solid choice. Okay. And what about you? I have one in mind that you need to say, but I'm not sure if you'll say it. So we'll see how you do on this test. Probably, probably, a, oh man, this is, this, is, this is terrible. It's a terrible question. Probably either... What would you cry if you lost or broke and can't be fixed? Well, my king of pen, Riallo. For sure. Okay. 
My David Oscarson? There you go. <laughs> now, so I don't know if that's a fair question. It's I mean, not. A, I can't. I can't answer that question. I, I really wonder. Talk to me, people. Can you answer? Can anybody answer that one fountain pen you cannot live without, and why? I don't think there's any pen person that can answer that question. I know. Because I then, then you'll have that one pen. You go. You know. I wish it was broader. I wish it yeah. was narrower. I wish it was italic. Are gold nibs really better than steel nibs? Um. Sometimes? I think that that's really subjective. I think there are some pens where you can feel the difference and other pens um, that, you know, like the, the Franklin Kristoff. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that is a bad nib in any way. I think it's a great nib. Yeah. Um, the Esterbrook, Yovo, yep. number six steel nib. Fantastic. It's really, really a nice, nice writing pen. There are advantages to gold. I think it's sometimes a little softer, but I think I think at a certain price point we expect the pen to have a gold yes. nib, and yes. I think there's an expectation that we think it's better. It's not always better. I don't Usually know they look nicer. Yes, because you can do more with it. You know, with steel nibs, you know, oftentimes they're laser engraved. They're not. They're not stamped, um, but. So are they better? Are they better? Not necessarily. They're not necessarily better writers. Yeah. But you know, you pay three, four hundred dollars for a pen. You, I it, want a gold. It better be a gold nib. That's, that's all right. Tough. Moving on. What is the one thing you sell that you wish you had when you were in school? When was in school? So is that high school, college, grad school? Doesn't matter, I guess. One thing we sell that I wish you had when we were in school. Vanishing point. I didn't have a vanishing point in grad school. That would have been, wish, that would yeah. have been nice. That would have been, yeah, a vanishing point. Um, you know, ink samples? A little vial, maybe? Yeah. To yeah. have at school, just in case you run out. Because I remember distinctly, I had a four-pen case that I carried with me. And I had one pen, because I was a grad assistant, and so I had to do a lot of grading of paper. So I had one pen that had red ink in it for grading. I had two pens with black or blue, and then I had a pencil. You used red for grading? I did. I did use red for grading. So in, a, in a Morocco red Esterbrook dollar fifty pen. Okay, nice. Yes. Yeah, nice. It was sweet. It was a sweet pen. Um, but I always had a pencil as backup. And there was one day I remember in class, I went through all three of those pens because I didn't ink them up before mm -hmm. class. You know, having a little sample vial or a traveling ink pot or something would have been really, really handy. I used um, the Clairefontaine hardbound notebooks. I would take um, fast, messy notes in class, and then I would go home and recopy them. I was that anal. Um, but it's space repetition, so you'd remember it. Yep. Um, and that way I could, um, e they come in different colors, so each color was a different subject, mm -hmm. and uh, it worked out really well, and, and that way I held on to them and they didn't fall apart. Um, so I had those, but I, I think a vanishing point would have come in handy. Yeah, yeah, I think you're, you hit the nail on the head there. I did. Yep. All right. Or piston filler. Uh, vanishing points, easier. Yeah. What is your favorite vintage fountain pen brand? Oh, well, that's a stupid that's, question. That's easy. Astrobook. Astrobook, yep. Uh, do you have any others? Uh, I am fond of relief. But that's an Astrobook. Yeah, thing. but it's. Relief in general is was not actually made by Esterbrook per se. It was either made by Conway Stewart or Aiken Lambert or Onoto uh, De La Rue. Um, very few actually relief branded pens were made by Esterbrook. Um, I just find those really. That would be, I know where all those are, and if the house was on fire, I would grab that case. What about Brooke? She could go in the other find arm. Find her way out. I'd toss her out the window. There. They can land. <laughs> um, She'd be at the door. She would she first. Would be, yeah. yeah. Um, I did have. I don't know if I still have it. A um, vintage Pelican. Would I have a one hundred N? One hundred. Do you have so, a one hundred N? I don't know what I have. I might. Uh, the green. If you one. had a one hundred N, I've never seen it. No, I don't know. I have a vintage a Pelican one hundred something. Is that the one I got you for no. anniversary? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what happened to that pen apparently. <laughs> You want to talk about the wherever you gave me? <laughs> some no. other show. Some other show. <laughs> um, and I did love that. So, all right. 
Should a fountain pen be able to write under its own weight? Absolutely. Yes, I don't think Absolutely. you should have to like dig into the paper. No, and I, I think there's a common common misunderstanding that you should have to press really hard to get it to write. No, a, a properly tuned properly tuned nib, and that's one of our tests. Is you Link can put it it, you can put it in your your yeah. first web space here. Is that what that is? I don't know. <laughs> you can put it there, and then under its weight, it should draw a line on the page. So okay. Excellent. What exactly is a stub nib? Go. Stub nib. Uh, very much like an italic, but a little more forgiving. Uh, horizontals write thinner, downstrokes write broader. Um, not as much, it's not as crisp. So on italic, sometimes if you rotate the pen just a little bit, that corner, that sharp corner is gonna get, is gonna get uh, digging into the paper and then it's gonna be scratchy and and very unpleasant, actually. Okay. Uh, but stub nibs are a little bit, a little bit rounder on the corners. I heard you can grind quite a good stub nib. I can grind a stub nib, yes. Excellent. What no longer in production ink do you miss the most? I have, uh, I have par two. Parker Penman Sapphire and Emerald. I do miss. You do still use Sapphire. I do. How many bottles do you have? Eight? I have like three. And I have, I think, two emerald. What do you miss? Uh, I have two. One you're going to know, and the other one you're going you're to be surprised at. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, Mont Blanc Bordeaux. Yeah, I knew that one. Yeah, yeah. Every time I see it it's, it, it's the law now. If I see a bottle, even if it's a half a bottle at a show, I have to buy it. And usually I get it cheap because it's a half a bottle. All right. And the other one that I really, really, okay, really like. I'm ready. Omos Green. That was a good color. You know what? You know what? One of the things, that reasons I like it. Color. Not only is it a really nice, vibrant green, but it was also the giveaway at the very first pen show I ever attended in Miami in 2000. Wow! They gave everybody a box of Ole Moss Green. That's cool. Yeah. Do you still have it? Can I borrow some? Uh, no, but I have. When <laughs> when Ole Moss went out of business, I grabbed I think the last two bottles we had, and it's down in our basement. Uh, I, I also miss uh, Lamy Dark Lilac. Hmm. That was yep, a pretty yep, color. Yep. And, you know, years and years and years ago, decades ago, Schaefer made, what was it called Arabian Rose? Persian Rose. Persian Rose. <clears throat> was it Persian Rose? I think so. Was it? They made a rose ago. color. I'll have to look it up. Um, we have a bottle, I think. No, I don't. I think so. Okay. I don't know. It was gorgeous. Nice color. And they made um, peacock. Peacock blue. Yeah. Uh, they made some good colors. Color. I don't yeah. know why they've. In the old know. bottle with the well. Yep. I love those. Well. So, all right. Can oh, you put more. ink from one fountain pen brand into a pen of another brand? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's all marketing. Mont Blanc says you can't put. Now they say. No. That. Many companies say that in order to have um, the pen warranted, you have to only use their ink. Um, but you can put um, platinum ink into a pilot, pilot ink into a platinum. Um, they speak the same language. They do speak the same language. Yep. Uh, Sailor ink is fabulous in anything. Uh, so you physically can use it. Um, the trick is whether or not it it voids any warranty. I guess would yeah. be the only caveat. But yeah, no, it's it's really it's really a marketing technique. Well, here's your pen. You might as well buy a bottle of ink. They might as well buy it from that brand. So right. that's really kind of what it is. All right. Do it all the time. My Mont Blanc JFK ink box says best before January 2020. Are expiration dates on inks common? You know, I I have a confession to make. I don't read my box. I don't know. Um, I, I, I've never seen it. I guess I should go look now. I've seen this on Mont Blanc. Okay. Ink. They do it on, on uh, roller ball refills and things like that too. But, well, but for bottled ink, um, if you keep it in the box, sealed, out of direct sunlight, it's fine you're for fine. I mean, years. How old is Penman Sapphire that you have? It's old. I don't even know. I've got I've got Mont Blanc years? Bordeaux from, 
you know, from the eighties, yeah. you know, I, I've got racing green. I mean, I have, I have stuff, I have script that I've used from the fifties. Yes. Um, as long as the ink is not um, too dehydrated, meaning too thick or sedimenty. Um, and as long as it like, you don't keep it out on your windowsill where direct sunlight can go through it. Um, most ink is good for a long, time. A long, long, yeah, in, many, you, many, many years. Your, your key components, I think, are making sure your whatever pen you ink it up with is clean, so you, there's yes. no cross contamination between inks. Um, the bottle's sealed, and it's in the box, and it's out of out of sunlight. Heat and sunlight. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're going to be fine for a long time. Or freezing too, because yeah. when when ink freezes and then thaws, there are occasionally issues as well. So but, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, again, that's that's partly marketing because they want you to think that in January 2020 you have to buy new ink. Well, you don't. So, all right. Anyway, so you were gone last week. I was gone for a couple of days. I was down in Chicago. We had a platinum event with uh, luxury brands, uh, John and Carol Gillette. I'm so jealous. It was a blast. So jealous. Um, Bryce and I are jealous. Yeah, yeah. It was too bad Bryce couldn't come. It's too bad you couldn't come. But we we had a good time. And uh, some of us had to work. Well, you know, I was working. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I've got a couple of pens here that I, that I brought back from the event that I want to show off. I know. Um, oh. Maybe one of my favorites. This has been one of my favorites for a long time. This is the, the 3776, the, the Poppy. Okay. Machie. Um, and this is not like the other screen printed Machies. This is hand Machie. So this has the Poppy on there, it has Rodden. Uh, chips in there. This is gorgeous. It's really a great, great looking pen. I think our dating anniversary is coming up. Well, that's fine. You can give that to me for our dating anniversary. <laughs> I, I, that would be okay. That would be okay. Uh, I right. might not get that Mont Blanc back in time. Um, so that's great. I, I, was, I was excited to see that. And actually, it was funny because Carol said, well, I almost didn't bring the pen. I'm like, that's crazy. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous Machia pen. Um, really on par with, with anything anybody else is doing, and the price is very, very reasonable, I think, um, for what you get. Awesome, let's see how this feels in my hand. Uh, 18 karat nib, and it's got that. Platinum has a, an 18 karat nib that they put on their high-end Machia, and it's got beautiful scroll work on it, so it's, you know, s sometimes one of the complaints about the 3776 is the nib itself, the 14 karat nib, is, is kind of plain. This is, is dressed up, it's, it's ready to go. Um, the next one, this is very special. This is the, the Platinum President, and uh, forgive me, I don't remember the pattern, but... Super pretty. Anybody, anybody who's, who's seen this pen is familiar with this. Uh, this has these little triangles on it. Um, this is the very last one of these available. Uh, like last on the planet in the U.S.? This pen is not made anymore. This pattern is now made on Izumo. Okay. Um, but if you rotate it, it has... Little pieces of rotten to form the... Almost looks holographic. Yeah, to form the triangles. If you look up close, they're just little pieces of little mosaic. Uh, gold dust, 24 karat gold dust, and a Rushi lacquer over the top. Um, but they decided that it's such a neat pattern, they wanted to put it on in a Zumo where it's going to be much bigger and bolder, and there is exactly one president in this pattern left. That's and, gorgeous. And we have it right here. Hmm. This is actually this is actually John's. This pen is John's daily carry. He carries it with him all the Not time. Not this pen. Not but this one, but he has his that own. that particular one. All right. uh, the next These one. These next two, I think I want. Yeah, this one is this is outstanding. This is the take that off. Sorry, this is the thirty-seven seventy-six. This is the Rod and Galaxy. Now, wow. What's cool about this? This is so. This is all little Rod and Speckles, all from head to toe on this pen cap, whole thing. Um, this is very similar to a Nokia. Mm -hmm. In fact, the same artist who does the work on the Nokia does this pen. Um, the difference is a Nokia has a 14 karat nib, this has 18 karat. And it's a snap cap. It's a sna wow. snap cap, friction fit cap, um, which means it doesn't have the, the slip and seal, but it's never been a problem on, on platinum. And really outstanding, it's just gorgeous. Um, and probably a third the price of the Nokia. That's amazing. It's really, it's something, it's something to see in person. It really is. Wow. So. All right. There's that. This what one, else this, one this one's actually been on my short list for a while. 
Oh, um, oh God, help me. And now, and now we have one. This is the 3776, the Karakusa, the Chinkin. See, that's too pretty <clears throat> for you. You need something masculine and... Okay, well, the next one then is masculine. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, I can you're, see it. You're no. re rethinking, rethinking that rethinking statement? That, yeah. uh, so this is... This is uh, that's gorgeous. What's, what's cool about this pen, and I didn't know about this until recently, is this blue, the base for this pen is the ocean blue celluloid. Oh. So if you look at it, and you can see it here, at the end there's a little bit bits of white, you can see a little bits of black. And at first I saw, I saw it, I'm like, well, what's a, what is that? Well, sure enough, it's the ocean blue celluloid, which has little bits of white and black in it. Um, and then the artist carves the pattern. It's kind of a floral, uh, viney pattern. And then fills it in with silver dust mm. and then a rushi over the top. That's beautiful. Rhodium trim. It's really, That's a good really, size for really me. stunning. We and could share. We could share. Yes, we could. You it, heard it here. It, it, it will start out in my case, and then when I'm done with it, I'll give it to you. But they did the section, too. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Really, really. God, that, much, that, that does like it. How long does that take to do? I mean, the entire thing, it's just crazy. It's months. It takes months to make that. So, rhodium trim, it's gorgeous. It is. Thank you. All right, so she said I needed a big masculine pen. That was too pretty for me. So this next guy. All right, I'm rethinking this. You can have the pretty one. This next guy. Oh my God. The Azumo Aurora. Look at this. That's 24 karat gold dust, which is really, really lovely. awesome. And this rodden work that, of course there's a signature, that spirals up and down around the pen, the Aurora Bo Borealis. That's so cool. On yeah. this huge Azumo platform. So, I mean, it really fits in the hand. And the nib is beautiful. Oh, look at that. That's the nib I use. Oh. Mm. Um, there, there, there are, this is, this pen takes a long time to make, so. Let me um, hold this thing before we. It's too big. It's too big for you. So I'm just who? saying. I'm just saying. You, well, I tell you what, we'll make a deal. You pick one, I'll pick one. How's that sound? It sounds like. A problem. That sounds like it's win win <laughs> to me. So anyway, these these were just some of the pens that we had. We had other pens. We had some uh, hand hammered sterling silver. We had some other maquillé with uh, um, quail shell. We had clip, other zumos. Clip is cool. <clears throat> this is beautiful. Yeah. This is too big for me. So, it was uh, it was great. We had we had a really nice display set up, and um, it was uh, it was a fun time. Well, and it was the first time that they had gotten to see the store. Nope. Um, they've known about this for uh, quite a long time and uh, have been just incredibly supportive. Um, we love them. And uh, so I'm jealous that I couldn't go. I had to stay here and work. Well, I brought it back for you. You did, and that's very that thoughtful. Nice? Yeah, that's so, something. Uh, no, it was, uh, it was a good time. So uh, we, I, we enjoyed our time there so much, or I did, I guess, that we're actually going back next week or this week. Actually, we are. We're leaving, When's, we're leaving today. Today. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to be yes. in Chicago. Um, we're kind of just doing some housekeeping there. Uh, but we will we'll be there kind of sporadically, but we will have with us the brand new Esther Brooks, the whole set. Yes. So you can see, uh, and I, I spoke with a number of people there this, this uh, past week. Uh, don't write on the tomo. Eh? Um, <laughs> number of people this past week showed them the pen. They're all they're pretty impressed. But we will have them with us, or at least you can see them. It's a um, they're nice not a, writer. Not available for sale in person yet. We can we can you know pre sell them on the website. But uh, we'll have the whole set. We'll be there kind of uh, this afternoon for a few hours. Uh, the pens will be there pretty much all day tomorrow and uh, Friday. Friday until maybe two o'clock, three o'clock. So. Um, come on down and see him. We'll have the MV nib adapter. We'll have the oversize. We'll even have the rollerball. So if you want to get a set, you can get the fountain pen and the rollerball to match. So no, they've they've really done a good job. Um, I know some people are um, keep pulling it out of my pocket. I know. Well, I like it. I really like the cobalt. I, I know there perhaps was an expectation that since this was being re redone, that it would be an exact copy of the old Estherbrook, but I really think that they've done a good job of incorporating modern technology and modern materials 
that still stay true to the core values of a good, solid, dependable writer. Yeah. Um, now there, 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 were, there were some, you know, maybe we should address that. There were some people who, who, who thought that maybe at $156, it's not, you know, Estherbrook was a buck, but remember- Back then. Back then, Parker dual folds were eight eight dollars eight fifty eight seventy five. So there's a you know there was a eight eight times spread. Uh, if you compare this pen with you know some of the top end pens now, maybe it's not eight times, but um, you know it's it's a steel nib. It's a, it's a nice body. It is acrylic turned. It's not injection molded. Uh, it's not made in China. It's made in Taiwan. Um, they're making no bones about that. Um, but it's, which, it's a high polished pen. It's which really nice. I think you have to respect. I know there were issues with the previous version of you know where it was made and all yeah. that. And you know you, well, yes, we wish everything could be made in the U.S. I think you well, do what it you would need. Be, it'd be a five hundred dollar pen. Exactly. It'd be exactly. a five hundred dollar so pen. So you do what you got to do to make it affordable. But I think they've done a great job. The design is terrific. Nice. The the cushion. I think cap I think cool. I think yeah, the cushion cap is really one of the nicest features of the pen. I think it's you know outside of the fact that the acrylic is, is just gorgeous. They 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 nailed it on it. Um, I just I just think you can't you, number one you can't please everybody. Uh, if they were to make a double jewel pen, uh, the uh, you know and, you know, it's going to be in the same price point. Right. You know everybody's going to say, well, I can go buy an Esterbrook all day long on, on eBay for twenty five bucks. Right. So, you know I, I think were Esterbrook to still be in business today. They would have, of course, come up with a new shape, a new model. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and and this is not the same company that brought us those other pens, right. those those early J's that were just kind of hideous. Um, this is complete different. This yep. is Kenro, who uh, does Aurora, um, Montegrappa. Um, when they so had Schaefer, they, they did some amazing things with Schaefer. Yep. So they they know what they're doing, and. Um, Joel, we, we talked extensively with Joel, and he really wanted to stay true to the, the idea and the concept of the original company. And I, I think overall they did a good yep. job. And the adapter the is great. such a great mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. if you have your own nibs, just screw it in, boom, you're done. So anyway, we can talk, we could talk ad oh, nauseum yeah. about that. We're going to bring them with us to Chicago this week. Come down and see us, uh, and you, know, you can play with them. They're, they're really, really super nice pens so uh available online right now pre-sale essentially they're waiting for the boxes to come in so yep but uh that's it anyway i think that's it for this week uh thanks so much uh for joining us tune in mm -hmm. next week for more talk about pens ink and paper well thank you you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> follow us online uh follow the blog for news ink reviews all sorts of other videos and fun things and follow us on social media as anderson pens and don't forget we have a store in Chicago. Do we really? We do. Oh, unbelievable. I know. Where is it? It's in Palmer House Hilton, downtown in the Loop, um, ground floor right across from Starbucks. We're open seven days a week. And uh, Chicago website is chicago.andersonpens.com. There you go. See you next time.